Welcome, my name is Christopher Paisley. I'm a Philadelphia public school teacher for Inside White Fragility. Today I'd like to talk about comparing concerned parents to the Capitol rioters. Even I, with all of the things that I've experienced in my 33 years, have never experienced anything like tonight, ever. Because this, what we've seen tonight, is why the Capitol was breached on January 6th. So on June 14th, this past week, um, the Tredeferin East Town School District had a school board meeting last Monday. It was their first in-person school board meeting in, I believe, over a year. And I think it's the last school board meeting of the school year. They had this meeting and it ended up being to a packed audience. It was standing room only. And one of the reasons why is because they, uh, one of the first items on their agenda was called their equity initiative. And there were a lot of parents who had things to say about the district's equity initiative. So it was kind of a big, it was a big event. It was a big school board meeting. There were some newspapers and local news stations that covered it. And um, there were a total of 33 parents who ended up speaking at the beginning of this meeting, which ended up being the first two hours of the meeting. Um, and it was interesting, it broke 50-50. There were about half the parents who spoke in support of this equity initiative, didn't have any problems with it. And then the other half of the parents, about 15 people, 15 or 16 people, um, they, they challenged it or they criticized it, or they just simply wanted more information. They thought it was not, uh, you know, they wanted more transparency. They wanted to know specifics about what was going on. So these parents spoke um, on kind of both sides of the aisle. Now, the interesting thing was uh, all of the parents really agreed that you, you needed more diversity. The district needed diversity. They wanted to end racism. They wanted racial justice. No one was disagreeing with that. No one was disagreeing with ending racism. No one was disagreeing with the fact that we need more diversity and everybody needs to have a place at the table. However, there were some parents who did not not, uh, you know, see eye to eye with the approaches and the curriculum and certain things, the way that was being done, at least according to what their, their children had to say about it. So they had this school board meeting and these parents kind of spoke out and I guess you could say criticized and challenged some of this. So at the end of the first two hours when all the speakers were finished, there was a brief intermission, and then one of the school board members, uh, a guy named Kyle Boyer, African-American man, he's 33, named Kyle Boyer, he felt uh, moved enough to have to speak about what had just happened, and he gave a 16-minute lecture, uh, basically, in a way, chastising the parents who I guess you could say dared criticize this initiative or challenge it or have different uh, perspectives on it. And he basically said in all of his years as an educator, he had never seen anything like it. I've lived in this community my entire life, save four years living in a couple of different parts and teaching in Philadelphia. And I can honestly say, even I, with all of the things that I've experienced, in my 33 years, have never experienced anything like tonight, ever. Thank God that I'm a board member because this is exactly why I ran for the school board. Kyle, why would you leave a great salary and a great job teaching in a great school, teaching great students with mostly great parents and a great community because of stuff like this? Because in our community, there are folks still who don't get it. So the interesting thing is it's like, how can you be a school board member and never have seen anything like this? You know, if you're on a school board and you're a teacher and you're interacting with the community, you should understand that there's going to be people who are going to ask questions. There's going to be people who are going to have different perspectives. And under this guise of, oh, you know, we welcome all the different perspectives, which is what the board said. And even Kyle Boyer himself says he welcomes multiple perspectives. But in this case, since parents were not flat out agreeing with this equity initiative, and it's very much like the intolerance that you hear about with critical race theory, um, he took issue with it. He said that the parents don't get it. That's what he said. 
you know, if you agree completely with, with, with the initiative, um, not just the goals, because all the parents seem to agree with the goals, but if you don't completely agree with the methods and the process, you don't get it. And it's kind of like dividing the people who do get it and who agree and the people who just don't get it and they're like the other. So he took issue with it, which is, um, which is, which is kind of surprising. All right. He also had this to say. So what a joy it is to be a board member in a district that's making every effort to ensure that students who look like me now in our district don't leave with some of those same gaps and that the teachers who stand in front of them don't teach with some of the same gaps, that they're invited, not proselytized to, not spoon-fed or force-fed, but that they're invited into different perspectives so that they don't get to a mic and say some of the harmful and hurtful things that we've heard tonight. So if you, if you hear that last part, he says, the harmful and hurtful things that we heard tonight. That's, the, that's how he describes the parents who challenged this, the, 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 you know, the 15 or so parents who challenged this. The harmful and hurtful things. So when you disagree, you're, you're being framed as harmful and hurtful. You can agree with the goals, all the parents do and did. You, we're going we're gonna to see these people in a few minutes. We're going to watch. We're going to look at the clips of this, and you can judge for yourself. So the parents agreed with the goals, um, but they had different perspectives on how to get there, and they did question some of the approaches and some of the curriculum. But when you do that, you're harmful and hurtful. This is the exact kind of a thing that critical race theory does because it is very intolerant. It does not, although they say we want different perspectives and we want to hear all these sides, but it really doesn't because you can't disagree with it. Here's a perfect example. Parents cannot disagree with it. So not only is he saying what they said was harmful and hurtful, but Kyle Boyer also compared the students, or I'm sorry, he also compared these people who spoke out to the rioters at the Capitol. Fellow board members, I, I'm going to be off in a couple of months, and I know there's at least a couple of people sitting together in the audience who will praise God when that happens. But to the rest of you who will stay, do not back down on what we know to be right. Don't do it. Don't take the bait. Don't cower. Because this, what we've seen tonight, is why the Capitol was breached on January 6th. Okay, so Kyle Boyer's intolerance, and I'm going to say the word intolerance, is quite shocking. Um, but this meeting is exactly why we need parents to continue to challenge and speak out and demand transparency because of things like this. Okay? You can't just call somebody... Uh, you know, an insurrectionist because they disagree with an approach to the solution. And this is happening all the time. Okay. So there was some examples of how this board member reacted. But specifically, I want to get into one of the reasons why these parents were up there. And it wasn't just because they wanted specifics about what is this equity curriculum. Okay, not just a, a mission statement, which we're going to hear in a minute, but what specifically are the kids learning? What are the activities? What are the lessons? Because parents were concerned because their children were coming home talking about what is white privilege. My teacher says I have white privilege. You know, children were saying, coming home and saying, are all white people racist? Are they all inherently racist? According to the, what these parents and these people are saying in the school board meeting, according to their testimony, which you're going to see. Okay, um, these are some things that raise red flags. When kids are being grouped according to the race, whites are this and people of color are this, you know, you're privileged, you're oppressed, you're an oppressor, you're a victim, things like that, that we hear all the time when it comes to critical race theory. It's not just that, but there's also another issue here. And the issue that parents were, were um, bringing up was this group called the Pacific Education Group. The, the, uh, the Tredefrin um, East Town School District has partnered with the Pacific Education Group and this man who's in charge of it named Glenn Singleton, and he has a workshop called Courageous Conversations. Um, he's brought in this, this workshop, and I guess you could call it curriculum, into the school. It's been there for a few years, but the parents don't know exactly what it is, and they want answers on exactly what the heck that is because they want to know what their kids are learning, and the district isn't giving any adequate answers because uh, supposedly, 
I guess the district signed a non-disclosure agreement because there's some copyright issues. So they're not telling the parents what this specific education group is actually doing. So the parents don't know. So that's another reason why they wanted to talk about this at the meeting, as we're going to see in a moment, and what they talk about and what they want transparency. And I guess Kyle Boyer, the, the school board member, was offended by this because they wanted to see what the heck this stuff was and they wanted transparency. And I guess they were against, in his eyes, the mission because they simply wanted more information. All right. So in order to see what this group actually does, the Pacific Education Group and Glenn Singleton and his Courageous Conversations Workshop, you have to do a little investigation. And if you do a little investigation, you'll see on their website, one of the articles that pop up on their website is an article called What's Wrong with White Teachers? So automatically they're now targeting teachers by race. They're racializing things. And there's this whole article about how white teachers are inadequate, especially when it comes to teaching children of color. And they show statistics and things like that. And there's an argument to be said about diversity. Okay, but then again, targeting and using race to talk about the quality and the you know ability of teachers might raise a red flag. So that's one thing you could see on the website. Another thing that happened with this Pacific Education Group um, was something called the Color Line activity that was done. Now, a newspaper called the College Fix they had written about this in the past, and a um, a, a teacher, I believe it was a teacher or or a student from the University of Alabama had gone to one of these uh, workshops called The Color Line. And what happens in this exercise is all of these teachers are made to answer these questions. Basically, I think it's 26 questions, and they have to answer questions uh, revolving around their race and culture. And they have to rate their privilege, and they have to rate how they feel as, as an oppressor or whatever. I don't know the specific questions, but you can read the article. And they have to, they have to rate it on a scale of zero being zero and five being the, the highest. And they go through the series of these questions. Then you have to add up your scores, and you have to write your score on a piece of paper and then hang that score around your neck and then go up into the front of the room, and you have to line up in order of the, your score, the number of your score from least to greatest. So in a way... It's like publicly humiliating um, these teachers and these participants according to their privilege, according to their culture, according to the things that are going on with their race. This is documented. This is a fact. This was an activity that the Pacific Education Group had done in the past called the color line. Okay, this is something. That, now, did it happen in, at the Tredefrin, um East East Town School District, as did this stuff go on in there? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I have no idea. It's not being disclosed, but that's something that had happened. Um, if you look up a New York Times Magazine article, which I'll put a link to in the description of this video, you can see Singleton, he was interviewed, and you can see how Singleton refers to the white culture in much the same way that Robin D'Angelo does with her white fragility, and he suggests that all whites are privileged and that they're inherently racist, and he believes that certain things like um, the scientific method and, and um, objectivity and the written word and linear math are aspects of white supremacy. Okay, so here's a quote from that New York Times Magazine article. Singleton, who holds degrees from the University of Pennsylvania in Stanford and who did stints in advertising and college admissions before founding what's now known as Courageous Conversations in 1992, talks about white culture in similar ways as Robin D'Angelo. There is the myth of meritocracy and valuing written communication over other forms, he told me, is a hallmark of whiteness, which leads to the denigration of black children in school. Another hallmark is scientific linear thinking, a cause and effect, he said. There's this whole group of people who are named the scientists. That's where you get into this whole idea that if it's not codified in scientific thought that it can't be valid. So that's a background on this guy. John, or I'm sorry, Glenn Singleton and his Pacific Education Group and Courageous Conversations. If you look at Singleton's book titled Courageous Conversations About Race, he has devoted an entire chapter um, about talking about whiteness. Okay, and it has subsections which are labeled white is a color, white is a privilege, white is a culture, white is a consciousness. So they're targeting, they're targeting race, culture, and color of people. Okay. That is this group, the Pacific Education Group, uh, Glenn Singleton, Courageous Conversations in the Tredefrin East Town School District for three years. This is, this is the program that's in there. You can look it up, and the parents had questions about it, okay? And there were no answers. And every time the question was asked about this peg, 
Pacific Education Group, the answer was it's there's been non-disclosure agreements signed and no, the information wasn't forthcoming, so parents wanted transparency. And I guess, again, Kyle Boyer had a problem with parents who were going to challenge on this basis, comparing these parents who are asking questions to insurrectionists at the Capitol. Now we know why the people, uh, you know, breached the Capitol on January 6th, uh, comparing these parents who want answers. All right. So the parents have every right to know. Uh, what is going on in their school district. Okay, they have every right to know. And these parents who ask these questions, I, I believe that they should be commended. So a total of 33 parents spoke. Again, it was about half in support, half had questions and challenged the things that were going on. Um, so that's what happened. So what I want to do now is I just want to simply play the clips so you can see the parents. Each parent was able to speak for three minutes. Okay, I tried to compress it down to about a minute and a half to get the gist of what they were saying. Now, because the uh, school board member, member Kyle Boyer w insulted and chastised only the parents who disagreed or had questions, I'm only going to play their, their um, statements because Boyer didn't seem to have an issue with the other parents, so I'm not going to make this video go on for hours. So I'm going to just show those ones because supposedly they were the people they were the people who were hurtful and harmful and that didn't get it and that were like the insurrectionists on January 6th, okay? So I'm going to play that now. Before I do, however, I want to play a, a clip of the one of the school board members reading the equity statement from the district to try and frame the night and the conversations on the equity um, initiative. We believe, um, I'm going to read our statement because I do think as you listen to some of the elements of the statement, uh, you can understand some of the things we'll be looking at within TE. We believe all people are worthy of human dignity and respect. Every person's authentic identity should be valued. Together, through listening, collaboration, and understanding, we can identify and eliminate barriers to racial equity. Thus, it is the role and responsibility of the entire Tredyffrin East Town School District at every level to dismantle and abolish any structure or system that unjustly discriminates against fellow members of our community. Therefore, we commit to recruit, hire, and support the development of a racially and culturally diverse faculty, administration, and staff. Practice inclusive, culturally responsive, and anti-racist curriculum and instruction at all grade levels. Develop and sustain anti-racist leadership among students, faculty, staff, administrators, and parents. Ensure disciplinary measures taken at all levels reflect racial equity and non-discrimination. Eliminate systemic barriers that result in racial disparities in standardized testing, academic outcomes, and co-curricular participation at all levels. Systemically review and revise district policies and regulations that have a negative and disproportionate impact on students, staff, faculty, administrators, and community members of color. Improve communication and foster community involvement related to district racial equity initiatives. And to engage stakeholders in racial equity work by establishing and sustaining authentic relationships and creating inclusive opportunities to share multiple perspectives. Thank you for, for those opening remarks. I hope that that frames um, the public comment and provides people who may not have um, heard the um, equity uh, work and statement from the district. I hope that you've had this helps to inform you a little bit about what's going on. Okay, so you see the president of the school board saying that she hoped that it made things clear. But the irony is it didn't make it clear. Just this broad kind of generalized statement does not make things clear, which is why these parents are up there asking questions because the district can sit there and read an equity statement and say, I hope that makes everything clear and you know what we're doing, but they don't know what they're doing because they don't know the specifics. All right, they don't know the specifics of the curriculum. Okay, for example, what is the district's anti-racist curriculum exactly? They're talking about anti-racist curriculum. Well, what is it? What are the lessons? What are the objectives? and what are the activities? It's not posted, okay? Um, what are the duties of the anti-racist leadership? It's not there. They don't know what it is. All right, do, do these things, does this anti-racist curriculum, does it target whiteness and white culture? like Glenn Singleton's uh, program? Uh, do they need to hang signs around their necks during the color line exercise and kind of be publicly humiliated like the Pacific Education Group did in a past exercise according to the college fix? All right, do they label all white children as privileged and inherently racist? Does that go on? Is that part of the anti-racist curriculum? Um, there were no specific answers. So parents asked questions and they should have. 
All right, please, sir, come to the mic, and if you would, wouldn't mind stating your first and last name and your township. Good evening. My name's Gene Tompkins. I'm a 40-year resident of East Town Township. My children went to this school. I was curious, given all the talk about racism, I went to your websites, and I was shocked beyond belief that Conestoga High School accused America of systemic racism. Your website has similar, where you're going to instill anti-racist leadership, whatever the heck that is. So, I have not seen it in all of my life. I didn't grow up around here. I grew up in a very tough northeastern city. I never saw it. And it sure wasn't systemic. I haven't seen it in the government I served. I haven't seen it in the military years I served. I haven't seen it in private practice. I haven't seen it in major corporations, and quite, quite the opposite. All right? So I don't think you have proof of what you say. So I'm taking advantage of the Pennsylvania Sunshine Law, and I'm serving you tonight in person. Whoever your officer is can take it. And I'm giving you document requests. I want to see what proof you have. I don't think you have any. Good evening. My name is Edward Rubenstein. I live in Tredyffrin Township. I do not have children in the school district, but I am a concerned citizen. I'd like to read part of a statement that was written by Victor, David Han da Victor Davis Hanson. Wokeism has become our most popular secular religion. In the, processes, in the process, wokeism has done a lot to damage America and will do even more if left unchecked. Here are some of its chief characteristics. Wokeism started in academia with critical race theory and critical legal theory. They are bastard offshoots of harebrained critical theory, which rose from a demoralized and adrift Europe after the cataclysms of two devastating European spawned wars. Wokeism destroys individualism. We cease being persons and instead become categorized peoples. Good evening. My name is Alicia Garrelanes. I'm a resident of East Town Township. We've been here for almost 20 years. What PEG, P-E-G, uh, Pacific Education Group is teaching and what you are paid. No, actually, I am paid. We are paid thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach racism. It's wrong. Our kids are afraid. They're anxious. If you have somebody in kindergarten that learns that you're the oppressor or the oppressed based on your skin color, how well are they going to make friends? How authentic can a relationship be if you tell my kid that he's either oppressed or the oppressor? Also, we have spent so much money on this curriculum, although sometimes it's a curriculum, sometimes it isn't. It depends on how you phrase it. Because TE, well, Pennsylvania law says that all curriculum has to be presented to the parents. But when I've called and spoken with you, Dr. Gusick, and when I've spoken with Wendy Tall, I have been told, oh, well, it's not really curriculum. Oh, well, um, you know, um, um, um. And then I've been told, let me see what it says. It says something to the effect of, sorry, but it's copywritten and it is privileged based on the contract that we signed. You signed it in my name, in my kid's name, in my district's name. That is not acceptable because I should be able to re read it. Why is it okay for my children, but not for me to know what you're teaching? What you are teaching is racism. Hello, I'm Deanna Wang. I lived in Tredyffrin for 11 years. I'm a proud mother of two TE, school, uh, TE kids. One of them is a Conestoga graduate who, uh, who is now at West Point Connect, proudly serving our country. In my opinion, in my opinion, American is great because of two primary reasons. This country nurtures innovative minds that drive progress on a global scale. And also, American people who always seek to improve and to embrace constructive criticism. However, critical race theory is create, creating an indoctrination environment that will constrain children's creative sense of self and consequently live, limit their analytical productivity as adults. CRT, furthermore, will divide our community it derives from the same root as critical Marxism, an ideology that shaped the Chinese Cultural Revolution that we Amer American, Chinese American immigrants see a lot of similarities. 
hi, my name is Sarah Marvin. I'm from Tredifferin. I have four children who've gone through this district. They've gone to Devon, Hillside, TE Middle, and Conestoga. I'm a Conestoga grad myself. I had a long speech that I had prepared, knew it was going to be three minutes, so I totally switched it up. And instead, I'd like to share an experience I had this week with you, because I think shared experiences is what this is all about. So, I got these new cool pair of jeans from Stitch Fix, and I know a lot of you know what Stitch Fix is, right? And on there was this tag. I was really interested in what it said, and I'm going to read it to you. It talks about curve equality. Engineered to lift, expand, and enhance for a universal fit because all shapes are different but created equal. And it got me thinking, what is the difference between equality and equity? Because really, that is what the heart of this is, because we've always been pushing equality. But now this new buzzword, equity, has come into play. And now equity is dictating that students have an educational outcome that is equitable. So I thought about, how about if I applied that to these jeans I'm wearing? Equity, I'm, I'm almost Thank done. Thank you, ma'am. Your, your time is Equity up. leads me to believe, because I look like the model, don't fit a size two, never been a size two, will never be a size two, that I will always be inferior. It elicits shame and hopelessness. It will make me feel animosity to those who are a size two. Thank you, ma'am. All Thank right. You. Do we get the difference between equity and Thank equality? You. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Daniel Markind. I'm a, re I'm a resident of East Town Township. On Thursday night, my son graduated from this high school. It is important that we discuss things that have not normally been discussed over the years, such as the Tulsa Race Massacre, Juneteenth, something called the Freedman's Bank, and that sort of thing. But that has to be done in a constructive context. I'm old enough to remember Dr. Martin Luther King. I remember him. I remember the day he was shot. I remember the riots afterward. And I remember the words he stated that were so eloquent that you've all heard a million times. I dream of a day when my four little children will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We are now in the process of becoming dangerously the opposite, where we, be, where we are being told that because there we have a pale skin or a white skin, we are inherently racist. I do not accept that in any way, shape, or form. Hello, everyone. I'm Yin Yan. I'm the resident of Chitipin uh, School District, and uh, my daughter just graduated uh, last week from uh, high school here. I'm very proud of her. Okay, so um, as a Chinese immigrant, I have been living in this wonderful country for over two decades. And uh, during these years, I raised my kids and worked several jobs and also went to school. So based on my personal and family experiences, I, I can tell, like just based on my personal and family experience, there's no systemic discrimination against any race in the state. So, and the CRT, in my view, divides people into different race group and then may discriminate certain group. In my view, it is an American edition of China's Cultural Revolution. Hello, my name is Rosanna Hag. I live in the Tredifferin Township. I am a resident, a mother, and a taxpayer. My daughter attends Valley Forge Middle School. I am here to speak out against critical race theories in our school because that's what it is. It's not diversity, not inclusion. The Redefern East Town School has been teaching critical race theory for all, over a year and a half. When I first became aware of this, uh, this radical speech and curriculum, I contacted a, an attorney and state representatives. I sent an email to the board and the director of administration asking for my daughter to be opted out. The ability to be opted out should be publicized and available to all parents with our family life curriculum. You can imagine my surprise when I was emailed back by Kyle Boyer with his individual capacity, very carefully crafting a message to distinguish his response, not from the board. He spoke at length about his education and his academy and white privilege does exist. And he asked me to speak to black people in the community so I understand. Telling someone they have privilege because of the color of skin is racist, regardless of what any of them is telling you. Our board and administration are asking teachers and to teach our children about oppressors and the oppressed. We have children in all different races and colors that have lived different experiences and is not being dressed at all. 
white privilege is critical race theory. I asked Dr. Wendy Toll a number of times and have filed a right to know in regards to the diversity of conclusions, and I have still not received that, still in appeals. Also, per district policy 6132, parents can review the, the curriculum, including academic standards to be achieved, instructional materials, and assessment techniques. Dr. Toll pointed us to the web page, and there's no curriculum on there. It's bullet points and plans. It's all about white people and oppressing. We know from public agendas that teachers have had workshops on critical race theory, and many teachers in this district are actually afraid to speak out. This board loves to call people names, and we have a number of spouses that actually troll people on Facebook as well. And I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you that like my 12-year-old my daughter coming home and telling me that what is white privilege and why does she have it because her teachers are telling her that is disgraceful. People are fighting all over the country, and we will as well. We have a petition starting with over 700 signatures, and that's going to continue. Thank you. Hi, my name is Barbara Ellis. I'm from Tredebrand. I'm a psychologist, and I am a Jewish kid from the Bronx. I I'm not sure what's going on here. When you talk about equity, I, I picture everybody, you know, if you have one person that's got a broken arm, you've got to take off everybody's arm so everybody can feel the same. Everybody's got different capabilities, different talents. Um, nothing is going to be the same. No one's going to have equal outcomes. I don't have millions of dollars. I don't expect to have millions of dollars. Some people are fortunate in being able to have that. If you don't let children earn, if you don't let them thrive, if you don't give them equal opportunity to be whatever God has made them to be, you're killing that child. You're, you're, it's a soul murder to that child. Hi, my name is Sharon McHugh, and um, my goal, uh, Mr. Ruse, is to beat your card. <laughs> um, I would like to thank all of you for um, all of your hard work and the teachers at TE schools. I have children um, through the last 20 years we've been going through the school district, um, and none of them deny that racism exists in TE schools. Um, however, in our house, we discuss race. And I try to teach my children that race is an, an illusion and that things that precede race are integrity, honesty, loyalty, tenacity, respectfulness, responsibility, humility, compassion, fairness, forgiveness, authenticity, courageousness, perseverance, politeness, freedom, reliability, conscientiousness, optimism, empathy, and spirituality. Good evening. My name is Justin Shi, a resident of a tradition township. I'm uh, 1999 to today is about 21 years old in this township. And I'm here to, uh, I have a problem with the superintendent opening sentence. The problem is that the racial equity and, uh, rings a bell in me. See, I'm pretty old. So I want to share with the board and also the, the committee members in this meeting my experience. So I'm the third person and to, for tonight it came from China. We actually came from a People's Republic of China. I grew up in a communist country. So the thing that I'm here today sounds so familiar. So critical race theory has a sibling way before critical race theory. It's called a critical birth theory in my days of a student. That was in the 1960s. That was the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Um, hello. Um, my name is Rongjin Yao. Uh, I'm a resident in two different township, and I have two kids in the school district. We shouldn't block the opportunities for certain students just because my kids are not thriving in, the area, in that area. We don't want to make others uncomfortable so I can be comfortable. Those are not true DEI. Don't fight racism and discrimination with racism and discrimination. The CRT and some of the training courses use controversial materials. And uh, they may have good 
uh, intention, but approach is highly debatable. I'm going to be fast. But we do acknowledge that we have racism and discrimination issues. How can we solve it? We go to the fundamentals. We are all unique, and we all have good characters, and we all have good principles inside us. We need to apply them in our daily life. If we can all apply those principles, respect, care, trust, take responsibility, contribute to the good, greater good in our daily life, we will not only win the battle with racism and discrimination, but also our students are going to be much better person. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Sizelev, and I am an East Town resident. I have two children in the district. We're open to talking about race in this community, and we want change. We want inclusivity. It's the way that we're going to do it is what is up for debate. And I think all of us stand behind that. Um, aspects of critical race or anti-racism, sure. But I also think that there's other, other opinions out there that are counterpoints that should also be presented and taught and not excluded in our district. It should be well-rounded. T has been one of the best school districts in the state for many years. The school board, administration, parents, and taxpayers all have been collectively engaged, striving for excellence. Excellence is what we expect in this community from our board and administration. We expect that our children will receive the best possible education, that they will be prepared to move on to the next phase of their life once they leave the district. This is the promise the residents of this community make to every child living here. It doesn't matter what someone looks like, we're all part of the same family. We need to encourage our children's wildest dreams and aspirations and do everything we can to make them come true. I challenge you to lead and not follow. I challenge you to create an inclusive curriculum that teaches all aspects of our history, a curriculum that teaches our students how to think and not what to think, a curriculum that is positive and supportive, not divisive. We are not a collection of colors or oppressors or victims. We are one TE. I've lived in this community my entire life, save four years living in a couple of different parts and teaching in Philadelphia. And I can honestly say, even I, with all of the things that I've experienced in my 33 years, have never experienced anything like tonight, ever. Thank God that I'm a board member. Because this is exactly why I ran for the school board. Kyle, why would you leave a great salary and a great job teaching in a great school, teaching great students with mostly great parents and a great community because of stuff like this? Because in our community, there are folks still who don't get it. The reality of the situation is that Kyle Boyer doesn't get it. Okay, um, he claims to have these multiple perspectives and he claims to welcome differing points of view, as does the rest of the school board. But you can see, at least by his reaction, I don't want to broad brush the whole entire Tredefrin East Town School Board, but you can see, at least by Kyle Boyer's reaction, that he doesn't seem to get it, that he doesn't like to have questions asked and alternative solutions to the same kind of goals. So I'd like to thank the parents that went to that June 14th uh, Tredefrin East Town School Board meeting. Thank you for speaking out against this kind of intolerance, and we need more parents to do the same so we can have a transparent system where all people are celebrated and we bring people together and we don't divide by race.